Hello and welcome to this Let's Play of Kerbal Space Program. Today I'm going to be showing off just a uh, quick small little lifter to get into orbit and uh, then from orbit back down. Hopefully we don't crash. Anyway, to begin I'm just going to grab this command pod because it's the largest of them. Bring it up here. Utility. Mm, not going to bother with a docking port. Let's give it a parachute instead. Do you know what? Let's give it three of these. So basically, a total of four parachutes. Hopefully, they'll all stay on this time. Because last time I played, they ripped off as soon as I hit 100 foot. Now, next thing we're going to do is structural. Wrong. Add a stack decoupler. From there, we are going to add a bit of control. In this case, a large advanced SAS module. This is so we can just hit the T button and automatically kind of stabilize. Under propulsion, we're going to add an RCS fuel tank. And a Rocco Max 200-32 fuel tank. Now, as far as an engine, I'm going to use the nope, not that tiny one, the Poodle. That's just to stabilize our orbit and to help us deorbit. Under control, we're going to use some RCS thrusters. Four of them here, and four of them here. Now, putting them at the extremes like this helps give them more rotational capability, or torque. Um, then we are going to add batteries. Yes, I said batteries. Get over it. Um, <laughs> these are going to go here. And then I'm going to use some solar panels just to be green, which is kind of dumb. But, eh, we'll deal with it. And once those are on, I'm also going to add some radioscope thermoelectric generators here. And that should be our orbiter. Now, structural, add a decoupler. Now, if you'll notice, as I'm adding components along the way, it is setting them in their stages. These stages aren't always what you want. Um, sometimes you might have to click and drag them around. In this case, we haven't had to yet, but we'll see. Next, we'll need our lifter stage. So, there we go. Now, you'll notice I did this in a very particular way. I didn't want another one of these because of the amount of fuel required, but I did still need that extra fuel, so I added this. Now, why did I add this tiny little fuel tank down here? Well, if you attach the main cell directly to this big orange booster, it will overheat very quickly and likely explode. So having it down here prevents overheating pretty, pretty well. So next thing I'm going to do, strut connectors. Same thing here. Don't need to do it up there. Now, I'm going to hit Alt to copy this and stick it over here. Next thing I need is what's known as a hydraulic detachment manifold. These will be attached at two points on the sides of this main booster. Reason for that is so I can attach two of these to the same main booster. So now I have three, technically three, main boosters. But I will show you the caveat just as soon as I finish using struts here in structural to link these. So this will go here and all the way up here. And then this will go here to here, here to here, here to here. Now do a little crisscross pattern. Same thing on this side. And there's a reason I'm doing it on both sides, because when I do it on both sides, it does it on both sides here. So center. And 
then crisscross again. And crisscross again. I know this is boring as hell, I'm sorry. Okay, almost done. And then last but not least, we need separatrons. Now what these do, these are really, really small um, solid boosters. So once they turn on, they will not turn off. But what these do is these push the uh, lift stages away from the main fuselage. If you don't do that, um, they will fall back into your main fuselage and cause a very large fiery explosion. I only know this through trial and error and um, catastrophic failure. Now, the last thing we need to do is this. You see these external fuel ducts? What this is going to do when you click here, first place that you click is where it's going to take the fuel from. And then that's where it's going to put the fuel to. Why are we doing this? Well, simply put, we want these outside boosters to fall off before the inside booster. If we don't do this, the inside booster will run out at the same time as the outside boosters, and that really wouldn't be ideal. So, um, what this allows us to do is have a main stage that lasts us pretty much to orbit. In any case, I think we're good. Save. Uh, oh. Last thing, I'm personally going to use autopilot because I'm pretty terrible at flying and I just kind of want to show how well the rocket works, not so much my inability to fly. One more, just for extra reinforcement because I know if I don't, I'm done. Hold on one sec. Oh, that's what I was going to do. See these little things, these launch stability enhancers? If you don't use those before the rocket takes off, it's going to sit on its actual engines, and um, that won't end well. So let's just bring these up here. And you want these to separate at the same time as all three of your main engines. Otherwise, you're going to be burning a lot and not going anywhere. So now we're good. I can save. We can launch. Hopefully I've been recording this this whole time. Yes, I have. Okay. <laughs> that would have sucked. All right, cool. So here we are ready to launch. We're not doing anything yet. I'm just going to set up a quick autopilot. Where is it? Descent guidance. There we go. 80 kilometers. Descent path's good. Engage. Zero. Uh, degree orbit inclination just means I'm going around the equator. So, very simple orbit. Three, two, one, lift off. All right, what you just, now that I've been interrupted, what you just witnessed was a gravity turn and the fuel running out on the 
uh, boosters. The gravity turn is basically it pushes it in the direction that you will be orbiting, so this way you can start accelerating into your orbit. Uh, if you'll notice, it isn't facing the direction it's going 100% yet because it still needs to gain that altitude. But by the time the gravity turn finishes, it'll be at zero degree inclination pointing at 90 degree east. And because of those uh, fuel ducts that we added earlier, our main stage still has plenty of fuel to get us there. Now it's going to coast out of the atmosphere because well, we don't have much atmosphere left, but it's going to coast out. Um, and hey, look, the moon is setting behind us. Once it coasts out, it can start to maneuver to get ready to circularize the orbit because here, as you can see, our orbit peaks out at 80 kilometers. Um, however, it immediately falls back to the planet. What we're going to do is once it hits this point, accelerate that way to push the periapsis out the back um, to round out the orbit. So highest point of the orbit, lowest point of the orbit, um, we want those to be equal. And here we go, we're circularizing, which should take a little while. Might not have enough fuel on my main stage, but that doesn't matter because we have our orbit stage. Okay, by the way, we are in orbit. I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. So yeah, it jettisoned the um, fuel canister back there. But now that we are in orbit, what I'm going to do is turn prograde, which means pointing in the direction of my travel. The RCS thrusters help, because it's not just gyroscopic stabilization at that point. And now that we're prograde, I can... where. Did I put those? Here we go. Solar panels. And extend them. Not that it really matters right now because, well, we're on the dark side of the planet, but we can accelerate time to get to sunrise. And here's sunrise. It's kind of cool. The solar panels will automatically turn to face the sun and we're orbiting.
you can see, it's circular. That's just a satellite I put on. I've got a few things out there on the moon. Uh, I failed my Minmus run, but I have some stuff on Duna. This one's going out to Jewel. which I'm hoping to land on Joule. Not on Joule. That would not be possible. It doesn't have a solid surface that you can reach. But, anyway. Um, let's send Jeb outside. Yes, you can do EVAs. So we've just sent Jeb outside of our capsule. If you put ladders up and down your ship, they can crawl along it, or you can let go and use what's known as an RCS thruster by pushing R. Um, if you are feeling particularly sadistic, you can use these to have them deorbit on their own, which would be kind of mean. I'm not going to do that. I'm not really much of a sadist. So let's have him grab the capsule again and board. Now what we're going to do is turn retrograde and get ready to deorbit. Hopefully. My D orbit will put me somewhere about here. And burn. Okay. Now, I don't want that to burn up and explode my face, so let's get rid of it. Now, I'm going to speed up time. Crap. Okay. Let's just turn. That's really hard to do without. Smart ass. Retrograde. There we go. It's going to take some time to deorbit, so let's give it that time. You know what? This is actually going to take forever, so I'm just going to speed it up. Mm, off. That was dumb. Retrograde. Now off. And speed up. You're going to see the thing start to ignite here in just a second. As friction kicks in. In about three... Two, one, there we go. But we won't burn up. We have heat shielding. Actually, nothing burns up in this. Hopefully, these parachutes will actually stay on this time and not, you know, fall off. Because that would kind of suck. I wonder what that is. Probably another planet or moon or something. Minmus, maybe. 
coming down for splashdown. Last time I did this, my parachutes came off around 100 feet, so I'll hold off until then. <gasps> yes, we're good. We're going to splash down successfully at less than 5 meters a second, which is still kind of fast and would still kind of be hard. And we have a successful splashdown. Cool.